a lot of men on TRT or are looking to become more optimized also take low dose aspirin. Why is that? What are the benefits, size maybe? Well, uh, it has nothing to do with uh, size whatsoever. So aspirin essentially has an interesting mechanism in the body. People think that it's a blood thinner and it's not a blood thinner by definition because to thin something, it means that you have dilution and that is adding more uh, liquid to a solute. Okay, that is making it thinner. That's, we're, we're, we're talking about viscosity. What aspirin does is it has an effect that is similar to what thinning the blood would do. And it simply takes your platelets, which go through both eccentric and intrinsic uh, thrombosis, or essentially a sense of, of clotting, okay? Eccentric would be if this was a break in a vessel and the blood would be coming out, and intrinsic would be an internal coagulation as a result of either damage or or inflammation inside the endothelium, or, or they come into contact with, with an injury. But the, the main concern is the intrinsic coagulation of platelets when it comes to baby aspirin or the 81 milligram a day protocol. And this is essentially um, an enzyme called uh, thro prothrombinase, which activates prothrombin, which activates thrombin. It's like a, like a five or six step multifaceted approach to coagulation. And there are two different pathways in which it can occur. It's a fair, coagulation is a fairly complex equation in blood. Uh, but what happens is your platelets act kind of like a catcher's mitt. They will come together and form this net to, to basically block the passage of more blood. And if you don't coagulate properly, you can bleed out, which is dangerous. This is why guys on blood thinners, you know, have to be very cautious. And this is why they'll tell you, you know, if you're going in for surgery, not to take aspirin several days before. And it's interesting because aspirin simply prevents an enzyme that causes platelets to become sticky. Now, once you deactivate a platelet, that platelet is done. It can never be reactivated again. To our benefit, platelets only survive eight or nine days in our body. And then they are taken out by the liver and the spleen in a process called phagocytosis, which they're engulfed and you know, the damaged platelets are gone and then new platelets are continually being formed. So ideally every three or four days, you have an opportunity of replacing those platelets. So that's why aspirin is done on a daily basis because if you're going to make the platelets less sticky, you're going to have less ability to coagulate. Why is this important for some guys, but not all? And I think a lot of guys overdo it. And you'll notice you bruise easily every time you hit something, you get a black and blue because that coagulation is inhibited. But what happens is secondary erythrocytosis, which we know we have a whole video on how that occurs, uh, is one of the potential side effects that can occur with androgen replacement. Your Ability to produce more red blood cells makes it a little more difficult for your blood cells to get through thin or obstructed or occluded blood vessels, especially when you get into the capillaries. This is one of the reasons red blood cells have this double concave shape so they can fold and pass through. When your platelets have too much coagulation going on, they make the blood vessel thinner and it makes it more difficult for the red cells. So a lot of guys think, well, if I have too many red cells, I can't afford to have an occlusion, which is true. And if I inhibit the ability of coagulation in my platelets, I'm gonna have an easier time getting the blood through. Well, if it's not a, a serious situation where you have uh, you know, any occlusions or you have a diagnosis of poor circulation, there is no harm in simply hydrating more, drinking more water, using a low dose daily Tadalafil for that vasodilation effect and allowing your, your, your platelets to do what they're supposed to do, which is coagulate when you get injured. So I would be careful in just throwing in aspirin as a, as a give me on everything, okay? You don't necessarily need it. I mean, I, I don't use aspirin and I've had periods where my platelets came back, you know, close to 500, which was temporary, but my platelets tend to ride in that 300 range, which is totally normal. And uh, if your platelets aren't elevated, combined with erythrocytosis, 
I'm not so sure that you necessarily need to be on a daily aspirin protocol. Now, let me just put a caveat up there. If you have heart conditions, if you've had stents, if you've had specific instructions from a cardiologist for a reason to go ahead and use a daily aspirin protocol, by all means, don't just take what I'm saying here and say the heck with it, I'm getting off my aspirin. But if you're starting TRT and all you're doing is Googling it and reading that you need a daily aspirin because you're on TRT, uh, I would advise against running to that conclusion.